Bobby, we back. Welcome back to the Purpose in the Youth podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the captain of the ship for the Super Duper squad from Ventura, California. The manager behind is Super Duper Kyle. Today on the show, we have Nolan Smith. Woo! Woo! Stand Woo! up, stand up. My man, welcome to the show. Yo, thanks for having me, I'm bro. I'm so pumped. We literally just chopped it up for like 45 minutes before this thing even started. I know, we should, we, should have, we should have fired the, the mics up and just, <laughs> and just made it that. Right? Nah, nah, nah. We, we can't let the people hear what we're talking about. We can't yeah, let them hear. top secret. Who is, uh, who's Nolan Smith today? How young is he? I am 28, almost 29. Okay. I'll be 29 in a couple weeks here. You're going to be October 8th. October 8th? Yeah. Throwing a big party? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, I, this isn't the big one. The big one's 30, so I'm just going to keep it as low-key as possible. You're just getting warmed up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Describe to me what life was like growing up in Ventura, California, because I'm an East Coaster myself. I would imagine growing up out here is a different world than growing up on the East Coast. What was it like growing up for you up there? Man, um, growing up in Ventura is beautiful. It's like, you know, it's Southern California. I think it's like one of the northernmost quote unquote Southern California cities. And I mean, it's like the weather is like perfect. I mean, literally it's like, I think one of my science teachers told me in high school that like one of the intersections, in fact, the intersection that I worked at, um, Victor or not Victoria and Telegraph, Kimball and Telegraph for my Ventura peeps is like has like the second most temperate climate in the world i didn't know what that meant but apparently he said that it means like the weather changes are like the smallest like like in a, yeah a degree a day essentially it most. stays at like 72 degrees <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> like at, at this intersection and the only the only reason why i didn't question him was because he was like the the super like genius physics teacher and so i just was like you okay can't I, I was i just was like all right bro whatever <laughs> but yeah, so that's what growing up in Ventura was like. It yeah. was really temperate. It was like, <laughs> you know, um, it, it's a beautiful place to grow up. It's like a small town. I think there's only like, I think there's like 110,000 people there. Mm -hmm. um, there's like three public high schools. Everybody knows each other. Um, everybody's families know each other. It's like, it's a beautiful place to grow up. It's like, I think it's big enough to where it's still exciting. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like. You, you, you like you don't get that small town it's vibe like of soup it, it's very small town but it's big enough to like still be exciting I, I i don't know i mean i think it's like the perfect place to grow up to be honest like i i have trouble even thinking about what it's gonna be like to like raise a family somewhere else it kind of just feels like it's almost too perfect but but yeah no i mean it was i feel very blessed to be able to grow up there you know i have like just met so many wonderful friends and and you know it's a cool it's a cool spot yeah. it's like it's like it's a beach town it's very middle class it's like it's i think men's fitness i just saw something on facebook uh some little facebook viral thing could have been fake news who knows <laughs> but men's fitness like voted it as like the number one most desirable place to live in the wow, world man. or something so like that's i guess that's how you could describe it but i think you know it's a small town so it's got its funky shit about it it's too. like anything else like yeah. it's like any other place in this country there's per i'm sure there's pros and cons to it there's all different things but yeah just imagining growing up in that type of environment meanwhile i'm on the east coast in december shoveling out my damn car trying to get out like that is yeah it is unbelievable how much how much different it is but yeah 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 no totally it's it's different and it's like I think, you know, it there I guess there's something to learn from from a place that's like super be I, I think that people get trapped in Ventura too. So like as cool as it is and beautiful and perfect, I think that it's also like it can be a trap in its own right, you yeah. know, where people don't ever move they don't on. Want, they don't need they to don't move leave. On. They don't, they need, don't to need to. Leave. They don't need yeah. to go anywhere. Yeah. But it's like, you know, there for us you know got you know when we got to a certain age it was like get me out of here like this is too small i can't i can't fully stretch you know spread my wings here. i need so to go do something i need else. to go do something else so like and there's a lot of you know there's a lot of my my peers are still you know friends and and family are still out there you know yeah doing it and and you know some of them are super happy and some of them are like man i wish i would have been able to get out of there and they couldn't do it you yeah. know but it's not a it's not a bad, bad thing. it's not a bad 
place to not be able to get out of. Yeah. You know, you just so. gotta find find what makes sense to you. What were some of the biggest lessons that your parents taught you growing up that you've definitely carried to getting you to where you are today? Man, um, my parents are just awesome. I think they're like, I think that they are the reason that I'm at where I'm at today. Like they're just, they're, they're just, I, I can't speak highly enough of them. It's funny. Cause I'll just get into conversations with people and I'll just be like raving about how like much I love my parents <laughs> and how perfect they are. And yeah. like, and like, I think that it's like, s- some people are like, that's really sweet that you feel that way about your parents. And then some people are like, feel some type of way. Cause maybe they don't have a good relationship with their mm-hmm. parents, but man, I, I can't even pin it really to one thing. I just, I think that my parents are, are two like very different people, but they, um, you know, they, they work really well together and they really balance each other out. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I think I get some of my like relatively balanced nature from that collaboration, you know, my, my mom is like super, super passionate and fired up and, and my dad is like super calm, cool and collected. And so I think that I, I find myself kind of like hopping between those two mm-hmm. spaces, you know, and, um, but as far as like a specific thing, man, I could, I could track it back to, to anything. You know, my mom is like, a, like a wonderful people person and she really lights up around people and I feel the same way, you know, I like, I love being around people and and I think that my dad is just super consistent and hardworking and, and intelligent. And, you know, it's like, so, it, you know, it's like not that either each of them are not those things in their own right. But I just think that like, yeah, like I, I everything comes from them really. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, I like, like any kid, I like really butted heads with them at several different junctures in my life. We but, all, we all do. Yeah, Absolutely. But, we all but do. I, um, yeah, no, I just, I, I kind of got to give them credit for everything. And just seeing even like a lot of my friends who didn't have as good or as consistent relationships with their parents, I realized that like that, that can be hard too. That can be another challenge in life is to, you know, when you have a super solid foundation, like parents who support you and, and like are encouraging of your growth. I think that that's like really important too. You know? Yeah, man. I, I just had a phone call with my mother yesterday about my car insurance was giving me issues and I called her and I was like talking to her about it. And after, you know, she's like, she left me a message. She's like, don't worry, I'll get it figured out. And I was like, damn, what would I do without her? You know what I mean? Like just yeah. that little moment of like, I'm stressing now, I'm calling the insurance, I'm cussing them out and I call her and she's there for me. You know, it's like little instances like that. I remind my, I try to remind myself, I don't always do it, but I try to remind myself that there's somebody else out there that might not be able to do that. And like, don't, don't take that for granted about like, just like appreciate and remind her how much she, like, you know what I mean? Some, just send a text, say I love you or something like that. Yeah. Just to kind of like give her that little bit of a, a reminder that you do appreciate and that you do care about them. Oh, that's so important. And I got to be better about that. You know, um, I feel like I, I give my mom shit about it too sometimes because I'm like, yo, you only call me when you need something nagging right? yeah. me about something. I'm like, I yeah. can't deal with this. That's what it's like. I find myself sometimes going, well, can't take that right now. You know, and I see, my, and see it's like, later. that's bad. That's, that's not, I don't want it to. So I, so I tell her, I'm like, mom, sometimes you got to just call just to say hi and not just nag about some shit. And she's like, well, you don't answer anyways. And so when I finally get you on the phone, I have to tell you about all these bills that are stacking up and you know, cause I still got a lot of my mail and shit, all the shit that I don't want to deal with. I got to go you and go to her. So she it. she yeah, goes through yeah. and she gets you up to speed on whatever mm-hmm. everything. But yeah, sometimes it, it's, um, it's, it's a nag thing, but yeah. that's the one thing I, I guess that's a, that's a lesson that I learned from, from them is like communication really. Like, I think that with my family, like my parents were never afraid to like talk about things. Yeah. You know what I mean? They were never afraid to like really like dialogue about shit and like, I think that that's one thing that has given, you know, has helped me, you know, be an artist manager or work with kids and, and, and not kids, but just peers and build teams and kind of is because I, I'm willing to have the conversations, you know what I mean? And the conversations are difficult. Like I realize that now it's like, sometimes it's like, I'm just going from one difficult conversation to another difficult conversation to another. And I'm just going, gee, it's like, it becomes exhausting. But I think that like growing up, like, my mom, my parents really didn't just go, 
like when some when you know when pressing issues would come up it wasn't just like let's go our separate ways and wait till everybody cools off and like yeah. whatever it's like no let's talk about this now and work through it even if it takes screaming and fighting and whatever and you know for better or for worse and i kind of and i've gotten this from my mom too but she like is very direct and so she will tell you exactly, exactly how, how it, it is. is i love it and and like i'm that way too mm-hmm. so like so people sometimes it, it can rub people the wrong way and so i have to be sensitive to that as well but like i think it also is an attribute because that way like people who are dealing with me or when i'm working with people it's like i feel like i'm relatively direct and mm-hmm. so like there's no like there's not a ton of like fluffing around there's like, no there's not a ton of fluff yeah. yeah and i think that like that probably gives people confidence in working with me because they're like well at least i know what i'm getting yeah you know what i mean here and and you know it's hard to see yourself so obviously these are all things that i'm continuing to work on and, and learn about but uh yeah that was always things and so like when my mom calls me and the first thing she says is you got six parking tickets and fuck it you know what i mean i'm like okay got- well she's like keeping it a hundred you know and, yeah. and i think that <laughs> Like that is important because I think when you're growing up, you know, we all have our like character flaws and different things like that. But like, if you're willing to like meet them head on, that's the only way that you can like at least recognize them and recognize them. And once you recognize them, you can work on them and like, you know, realize like, okay, it's, it's pretty fucked up when I do this or, you know, or I I need to admit that I was wrong here. Like this wasn't the right way to handle Mm -hmm. this or. Or whatever. If so. you keep delaying things, you eventually have to attack. You have to confront the issue. So it, you might as well do it right now. You might yeah. as well attack it. And it sometimes it sucks. It sucks going through dealing with whatever situation you're going through. But it's inevitable. Like you yeah. have to deal it. So it's like let's do it right now. Let's see where it goes and just and just run with it. Let's, let's just run get with it. Yeah. get it done. Let's get just to get it done. Yeah. Not beat around the bush. Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you? Thinking back, I, I love it. just the childhood. I like setting it up because I think a lot of things you can have that have happened in your childhood probably have helped get you to where you are today. What was one of the best jobs that you had? And I don't mean necessarily you enjoyed the most, but you can look back and think, I learned the most from. So it might have been the job you hated the most, but I'm sure there's a lot you could have learned from it. Yeah, um, that's like a pretty easy answer for me. And it was, um, being like a pizza boy, being a pizza delivery guy. That yeah. was like my, I saw that in the, con- like, in the contact when you <laughs> added your contact yesterday. Pizza I, said boy, pizza boy, and I was pizza like, right, I know exactly where this is going to go. Then. Yeah. That's kind of like my little LLC. That was like my little like holding company, um, for like all my creative projects kind of falls under pizza boy. And you know, man, being a pizza delivery guy, it was a great job. I have to admit, it was awesome. Uh, sometimes I miss it. Um, <laughs> but, but there were really shitty parts about it, too. And so I'm blessed that I don't have to do that right now anymore. But I'm humble enough to know that if I have to go back that route someday, then that it's always going to be there for me. Or maybe not always shit. I don't know. But um, yeah, that was really cool. I um, But, you know, just like anything else, it, it was like one of my first jobs, one of my early jobs. I, I like... I worked in restaurants. I, I like bus tables. I bar backed. I bartended a little bit. Like I kind of did the whole restaurant thing. And then at a certain point I was like, man, I don't know what it was that made me want to deliver pizzas. I think it had something to do with like the hours and it was like relatively flexible. And like, I was kind of just tired of like working specifically in restaurants. I was kind of doing all these things at once. I was like, while I was in college, I was like, working at a restaurant or working at a bar like two days a week on Fridays and Saturdays. And then the rest of the, because the bar business wasn't busy the other nights, I would like deliver pizzas mm-hmm. on those nights. And, um, yeah, no, I would like, it was really good. I, I'm trying to think of like how to explain it, but basically I used to tell my parents that I'm driving around picking up money. Cause that's kind of like what you <laughs> what do. Doing. You literally like drive around and I loved it because I got to just listen to music. Yeah. And you're on, so you're by yourself. You're, you're by like you're yourself. Own, you're you're on your own. Yeah, you're like, yeah, it, yeah. I think that that's what it yeah. is about it. It's like, it feels like, yeah. It's, it's like, like a hustle. You have to go drop this off, get the money, money go back, exactly. drop it off, get the next pizza, drive it off. It, but you're by yourself. You don't really have anybody directly like screaming down your you neck. Throw, yeah, you, you spend a lot of time. There's like time to think. You get to drive a lot. There's something about driving that's pretty like relaxing mm-hmm. and, and cool. And like, especially in Ventura, on the east side of Ventura, it was like, not no traffic. You don't get traffic up there. Oh my god. Yeah, no traffic. Just kind of cruising 
dancing around, lis- literally listening to music. And that's like, that was like when I was in college. So that during that time, I was really like falling in love with music and falling in love with the music industry and, and all of that. And like, I was listening to all, I was on the, the blogs and I was like, I remember what I had like a, a six CD changer and I would like, sometimes before I'd go into work, I would like, if like a new mixtape dropped that day, I would like burn it onto a CD just bump fucking, it. and just play it front <laughs> to back. And it was amazing. I mean, like, I feel like I still don't get, I don't get to listen to projects yeah. as like focused and intense as I did when I was delivering pizzas yeah. because it's just a different culture now. It's like with like streaming and like, playlists and you just it's so distracting like you're mm-hmm. on your phone but it's like at this point in time i was like literally like burn the thing onto a disc put it in put the new dom kennedy in and press play <laughs> and it was just an experience and listening to it in the car that everyone knows that's the best best place to listen, listen to music and so like and it was like it would the only time the only time it would get broken up was when i'd have to like stop and get out of my car and deliver the, the pizza, pizza like, and then yeah and take then the pizza right back in there yeah i know i know exactly <laughs> no, no so yeah um so yeah and then so I just love the freedom of that, you know, and, um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was great. And I, I kind of, there, there's, there's like some funny stories about, I had a cool boss. It was like low key. It was, <laughs> it was just like kind of a funny college job, yeah. but, but yeah, I mean, it helps. I feel, I, I wonder if other people who, if, if you've delivered pizzas before, let me know, find, hit me on Twitter or, or, um, or like shoot me a message and let me know if you kind of have the same fond memories of delivering pizzas. Maybe you're still doing it and you like it or you hate it. I, there, there was definitely parts of it that I hated about it too. You get stuck in the, in the, the shop and have to like, you know, scrub floors and just do, do the grind, do, do the, do gri- the, grind do the work. grimy work, you know, which, which is necessary. I mean, there's grimy work in every, every industry, everything that you're doing, you gotta, you know, I think back to when I was, I was the bag boy at a grocery store. Like I had, I mean, yeah. looking back, I, it blo- I mean, that was the move in high school. Like we all worked at the local grocery store, and it was cool because it was very, uh, it was very flexible. If I couldn't work, I could give it to somebody else. Or yeah. But it was looking back, it's like I had to do that at that point in time. Like I had to be the guy who just bagged groceries and put into the cart. And just some of the lessons and I learned in the communication with customers that I love the job. Look, was it bad? No. But did I learn a lot? I learned so much, man. Yeah. And it's it's. It's jobs like that, like you said. Would you want to go back? No. You wouldn't mind it because you you you, you learned things, it. There were things you learned to love it. You learned to love it. Yes. But there were like the cool thing about delivering pizzas was like it was such an adventure because like you would get this person's address and like I'm trying to think. This is 2000 and let's say 2009, 10, 11 maybe. Okay. And like. You'd get this person's address and like you'd plug it into your GPS. But I, for some reason back then, like iPhone GPSs weren't as like it's probably sharp still, as they were. You still had were. to have like the actual GPS it's in were, your car. Yeah. I mean, I think some people did that, but I always had my iPhone, so I would like just do it on my phone and stuff. But then you would just start memorizing them, or you'd know where that street was or whatever, so you just know how to get there. But like, you some it was just exciting. You never knew what you were gonna get. You're like pulling up into these people's personal space. You know yeah. what I mean? You're like pulling up to their crib. crib. You're opening the door <laughs> like kids around dogs are barking people are naked shit you know what yeah. i mean it's just like shit is happening yeah. you know what i mean and i like that and i always just like to get like like i said i like people so i just i would meet new people and and like whatever sometimes i would like it was it was good it was like relatively exciting you never knew what you were gonna get when you walked up to that door no and um yeah and then it was cool there's like cash tips and stuff so, you're, so we were i was like making decent money i guess for like that you know just to get by for that type of thing yeah. you know what i mean it, it, i i i think it was like relatively comparable to like waiting tables or something where you can like make 20 bucks an hour or something like that with like some cash and stuff yeah and i was just driving around like really listening to music like really listening to projects and and just being such a fan of of the culture and i think at that time i'd already realized that i wanted to be a music manager like pretty soon after high school like i knew i was like I started listening to music on MySpace and like discovering some of these different artists. And then I like discovered Asher Roth and then I discovered Scooter Braun. And I was like, I want to be that guy. That's the, you go. know what I mean? He's the go. Yeah. I was like, I want to be that guy. Yeah. And then I kind of just started like, ju- I just got really into blogs and started researching You're doing, like, some stuff. F- photography too, video yeah, making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just, I just kind of like, I started really diving into the blogs and just 
seeing, seeing, just becoming a fan of everything, a, a fan of the artists, a fan of their managers, a fan of their homies, you know what I mean? Started following people on the internet. This is pre-Instagram. So, which is crazy because Instagram is like, literally like the most power i was talking to somebody the other day but it's like the most powerful it is. tool it's ever. the power, most powerful platform right now it's the most powerful platform of like the last 10 years i would even yeah. say i mean especially in our industry and and stuff like that but and it just in for entertainment in general but 100%. like percent but yeah Insta, this is pre-instagram and so i was like following these dudes on twitter and like going down to la to go to shows and just trying to figure out how like i fit in i knew i wanted to be a manager but it was like okay do I like try to manage an established act or do I, and then also being 18, 19, 20 years old, I I, like, I didn't necessarily have the confidence to like, try to like, I didn't know more than the dudes that I was like a fan of. I was like, they know more about this shit than me. So like, I can't like manage, how fuck am I going to manage them? You got to learn. I got to learn myself, you know? So I just started spending time like going to shows and going to, to, um, like in-store performances and hanging out on Fairfax. And this was like Fairfax before, um, before like Tyler and Odd Future made it like really like now it's like mainstream popular. Yeah. It was like more like low key, like LA kids knew about it. And it was like where all the streetwear brands were like popping off. I was a big fan of the hundreds and, and like diamond supply co and, and stuff like that. So I would like go down there and kind of just like kick it. And I saw just a bunch of like other like-minded kids, kids like me, that people had cameras and skateboards and shit. And they were like, they were like kids. I remember seeing Tyler, the creator down there, like way early, like before Before he he rapped, you know what I mean? But he was just like a kid on Fairfax, just like wreaking havoc, riding his bike around. (laughs) Like, yeah, yeah. No, I just remember seeing him down there and I didn't, I didn't like, know anything about him yeah. but it was just like you when you'd go down there a couple times he was just always there and yeah. shit and I was like oh okay so like and there was like a culture happening and I was talking to um my boy Josh Pease who who formerly managed Casey Veggies who was like a similar type of mm-hmm. kid these guys him Josh and Anwar Carrots were like very in the culture you know it's like they went to high school in LA and like you know spent a ton of time on Fairfax and were like around all the cool shit before it like bubbled and became like big and so they got in there before it became they just yeah they're there's part of the reasons why like they were part of the reason why it became big is because they were like cool dudes like pushing it forward and like building their social followings and like becoming tastemakers and getting people hip to it and um yeah so I just I guess I just did that you know what I mean I like started kind of inserting myself and meeting people and, you know, like b- always being so inquisitive and being such a people person. Those things are like things that you need to do. Yeah. So you need like, to like put yourself would see out me, there. Yeah. Like people would see me and be like, damn, I see this kid everywhere. And like, he's always like saying what's up or he's always asking me a question or like whatever. I remember, um, so like the first group I was like a big fan of was Pac Div and that mm-hmm. was by way of the cool kids. I, ac- I was actually hanging out with the cool kids couple weekends ago in uh in new york city and i told him this i said you're like damn near the reason i you guys are damn near the reason i work in music you know what i mean i like discovered your music went to one of your la shows pack div worked there or didn't work there (laughs) i take that back pack div opened up for you guys i saw them i was like these guys are dope as fuck and then i became a fan and then somehow some way kind of started like getting to know them, wanted to help them tremendously. So I, from that point, I started like kind of networking with them and then interning for them ultimately and then going on the road with them a couple of times, one thing after another, then came home, Kyle was doing his thing, started helping him do his thing. So was there a moment with Kyle? Like how did that, how did you become what like that? How did that relationship happen? Um, so, was he KID at the time? Or yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No, he was Kid Cash, actually. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> rare, rare. Rare. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so... I, 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 the, the Kyle, this is the Kyle story. The Kyle story is... he. I remember hit, like discovering this one video that he made when he was probably like... Oops, sorry. I remember discovering this one video he made... Um, called the Can You Flow Session with like a few of his homies. Okay. And it was just like a YouTube video, really poor quality, um, of them just like beatboxing and rapping like outside of his crib. And he was from Ventura, and I, well, he was originally from the Valley, but had moved to Ventura before high school. And so, and I'm from Ventura, and Ventura is a small scene. So it's like, you know, 
you you're everybody not, knows each other or everybody is one degree separated yeah. like literally that's as far as it goes like literally everyone in ventura is only one degree away from each other mm-hmm. so i saw him do this and i was like this is really dope and i had like a blog at the time it was called ventura's finest and like i was that was really just how i was putting my friends onto like new shit i was discovering online yep. and i remember posting it on there and like talking to my little brother about it who is kyle's same age and he was like, oh, yeah, I know those kids. Like, blah, 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 blah. They're at Ventura High, and, like, they rap, and it's, like, cool. And I'm like, oh, that's dope. And so I was, like, kind of just keeping my eye on him. And this, he might have been, like, 15, and I was probably, like, 19 okay. or some shit. You know what I mean? I yeah. was, like, I was just out of high school. They were, like, sophomores. And um, and then so some time went by, and then I think I went on my first tour when I was, like, 20 or 21, and so they, they're obviously progressing in high school, getting to their junior and senior years. And then once I came back from my first tour, I was like, I want to do this. Like, I want to continue to like create a music culture in Ventura. I want to throw shows. I want to throw parties. I just want to like bring people together. Probably, Cause I got inspired just to go on just the road. Insp- like that. Yeah. I was inspired. I was inspired from going on the road. And I also was just like, dang, like, like you know, just like your hunger to start this or mm-hmm. you like, I was just hungry to like start something and build something, mm-hmm. you know? And so I start like kind of through this blog who had what that had this like really small audience, but just like kids in town kind of knew I did it. And I just had friends and stuff. And so we just shared it. I just started like throwing these parties. And then I did my first rap show, which was like, I just like all the kid, literally the four kids who fucking rapped in Ventura <laughs> County. I was like, you, 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 <laughs> and you. Coming. Let's do this show. Let's like, I convinced the the bar owner to like let us throw this like rap concert, which like took so much convincing, oh, and so much work. I bet. And and like Kyle was like the first person I really thought of to do it. I was like, okay, yeah. And then like everyone like sold tickets, and like he sold like the most tickets. So it was like he got to headline, and then. So we like threw through this show together and it was just a huge success. It was great. It was like sold it out. It was like, there's probably 250, 300 people there. Oh, nice. It was a that's good nice. vibe. Yeah. It was like everyone kicked ass and I was just like, yeah, like let's, let's keep doing this. So like then like, I think we might've done another one of those or whatever. And then I went on the road with Pac Div again and I went on the road with Pac Div and Mac Miller. They opened up for wow. Mac Miller. Okay. So after seeing that's that's probably when Mac was like really starting to hit the gears. Yeah, right? so this is Blue Slide Park yeah. Tour. Oh, so yeah. which was like I, I think, went to, I went to that uh, You went to that show? Uh, yeah, Northampton Mass. Okay, yeah. I think I you know what? I think that I was at was, that show. It was too. like a weird it was like a church I don't know, it was at Smith College. I just remember that. It was yeah. at Smith College, but it was a very intimate, like eight I don't remember, eight hundred people probably venue, but Yeah, yeah. So that's crazy. So we were in the same building. Same building. Same building at the same time. So, um, yeah, like, once I saw Mac doing it, I was like, yo. Because this was, like, kind of a newer brand for me of music. Because all the shit that I was into was all the Fairfax stuff. Pac Div, Dom Kennedy, in addition to, like, the cool kids. And then there were, like, bigger artists like Kid Cudi and, like, Asher. Like, some of these ones who had, artists who had kind of, like, broken through with, like, mm-hmm. a big record or, like, whatever. Or, like, they got a record deal. But then, like, I didn't realize that there was, like... I mean, and Mac was like after Wiz, like Wiz kind of went through the door, and then and then like Mac, Mac went right and then him. Mac went right behind him, and so like I thought Mac kind of represented this like other thing that was like you know he was a white kid and it was like he had a lot of white fans and like he also like his audience was growing really fast and like college kids loved him. I was kind of like. Oh shit! So then, then that's kind of when I started discovering like the college like music scene, where I was like, "There's all these artists that are like bubbling, and they're like, kind of like they're not like backpack, like streetwear swag rappers. They're kind of like this Try other thing. There's this other thing. Lane. There's this other thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so when I saw that, I was like, "Cause, cause Kyle wasn't this like Fairfax kid. You know what I mean? He's like from Ventura, like." He's, like, super quirky and, like, creative and, like, dope. I was, like... So, this just kind of helped me make sense of that. And then, like, when I was out there, I, like, hit Kyle. I remember I was in Atlanta, and I sent Kyle, like, a Facebook message. And I was, like, yo, bro, like, I think we can really do this. Like, I want to be your manager. Like, this is what we need to do. Because I was, like, watching Mac and his crew, like, do it every single day. And they were, like, really sharp. And they were, like, really good. And it was, like, really him and all his homies. Yeah. 
um shout out to those guys man most dope those guys are like good peeps they're they were awesome but yeah and they were young they were all i like, remember following that movie they were like all like 18 and 19 yeah. but just like super creative and cool yeah. and yeah and i just remember seeing them do that and i was like yo like kyle can do this like for real and so yeah so basically like i got back from that tour and this is probably 2011 and i remember something about like me internally like january 1 of 2012 i remember we put out this one Kyle video, forgetting which one it was, like literally at midnight on the new year. I'm blanking on the name of the track. Okay. It was Kyle and Mr. Man. It was okay. KID and Mr. Man. But um, I just remember like two, uh, January 1, 2012, I was like, in my mind, I don't know if there, were, there was, it wasn't like there was nothing on paper or there was no sort of like, I don't even know if Ky I told Kyle this, but I was like, <laughs> we're, I'm like dedicating I'm my in. time. I'm, I'm in. in. I'm all in. Sign me up right Sign now. Sign me up. Yeah, I was all in at that point. And I think that that's kind of crazy because I need to use that as a, from just a commitment standpoint, I think that as soon as you become all in mentally and you like really make that shift, I think, like, because when I look back on it, what is this, how many years later? Almost six, six. seven, yeah. six. Like, I can I can remember that moment that I made the commitment. Like, you told yourself. I can, I remember, this, I remember the, this, the, we're, they're doing this. There's no, starting, like, starting, yeah. We're, we're not going to just, like, do this for a couple of years and then, like, retire, like, we're I'm going all We're in. going in until this works. We're going to, we're going to push upwards until, you know, we're going to push until upright, right? So, yeah, and I think that that's, I think that, because the thing is, is you can kind of like dance and just like flirt with things and like want to help things and want to like be involved and then you can just like make a commitment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I wanna, that's what I appreciate about you in this. It's like you are committed to this. Yes. And you, there's no, and this is going to work. It is, it is. It's going to work. It is a marriage, okay? Like I've lasted longer. I've had a longer relationship with this than I've had with any woman. Like I am fully all in and invested on that's this. Amazing. And that's amazing. But that's the thing is, and I, that, I hope people laugh at that because I really don't give a shit. I just tell it how it is. But uh, you have to like sit down and really tell yourself, I want to do this and I'm going to do it. Because a lot of people, I don't want to say there's levels to to it, but there's like levels of commitment. They they say they're going to do it. They never get to it. They go for a year. Then they kind of retire. Somebody goes four years. Something happens in their life. They never get back to it. All it is, I swear, like the only reason... I'm at where I'm at today. I'm sitting down with you is because I told myself what I was going to do and I followed through. I committed and I yeah. delivered. That's all it is. And I'm sure it's the exact same thing with Kyle. Yeah. You guys said you were going to commit to a relationship. You said you were going to put out this project. We're going to do this. We're going to execute. We're going to do this strategy. We're going to go on this tour. And you just did it. It wasn't Yeah. It wasn't like, through, ah, yeah. we'll try next year. Maybe, you know, maybe 2015 will be the year we take off. It's yeah. one foot, another foot, another foot. And it's that commitment of going and going and going. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, dude, it's, it's really, yeah. And it's, and it's crazy to track it, track it back to like, for me, that time mentally, you know, obviously Kyle made it up in his mind years and years and years before that he wanted to pursue a career in music. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But for me is like, I think that just being like, I'm your manager, I'm the manager, you're the artist. And like, it's my job to like, make it happen make it, for you, make you, it happen. Yeah. Like you make putting, the music. giving yourself that, that it's a, it's a little bit of pressure, but it's just really that commitment. That's what, it, and then all of a sudden it's like, and you know, it's like, do you really know how to do it? No. no, no. Like, and that was one thing too. I, I tell you, like I always call myself a student of the game, but it was just because like during that time I was like picking up every piece of like text I could find on music business, music industry, reading about reading artists, autobiographies and biographies about artists, meeting, reading about executives, you know what I mean? Just like soaking up the entire game and like learning and learning and learning. And that was, yeah, I, I say that cause I was like, I wish I was like following these dudes on the internet trying to like see what books that I would like send them DMS. Like, do you guys have any books about, or, or like any like book recommendations? Cause I love to read and I, I was like, and just trying to soak up as much crack game the, as I trying could. To crack, crack the code. code. Yeah. yeah. I was just like trying to like, you're not going to get it just sitting on your yeah, ass. Yeah, there so there is just, something that you have to like just actively do. pursuing. But, and it was funny because at the time there were people who told me like, you just need, like you are going to learn by doing, like yep. I could tell you about publishing. I could teach you about publishing, but you don't need to know that right now because yeah. it's completely it's so far ahead. irrelevant yeah. to like where you are currently at. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so there was a little bit of that as well, but I just was never afraid to ask questions, dude. And so 
and I was just really passionate about Kyle and Kyle's music. And I was like, this can work. I can, I can help him. And he, and he's just such a great kid. And so he, like, that was the other thing too, was he was just like an awesome person to be around and, and then like a, a very hardworking. And every time, every like prior to me making up my mind that I was going to be his manager and whatever, every like little, like bone that I threw him, he like slam dunked it. Yeah. You know what I mean? He like turned it into an alley-oop, whether it was like this show or that show or like it didn't matter this what it studio was. session yeah. or like whatever. And so like, it was just cool because I just realized, damn, if I keep doing this and it's still the same way to this day, mm -hmm. it's crazy because it's like, it's every time, you know, it's like Kyle is, he's, he's starring in this Netflix original movie right now. And it's been a process in order to like, for him to earn the role and like the, for the producer and director and all, all the people to be like, this we is, want him. We want him. Yeah. It's like literally we've been working on it for the last six months. And every single time I just had the confidence of saying like, even though he was touring and doing all this other crap and they were like a little worried, like, is he going to fully commit to this? I was like, when, when Kyle commits to something, he goes all in. He'll do it. And, and I guess that is also in lieu of me, January 1, 2012, committing mm -hmm. and going all in. And so I guess we're, we're I'm reminding myself that if you want something to work, commit yeah. to it and go all the way the fuck in and it, it's, and and it I will think, work. It's, and it, but it's going to take five years. Yeah. And I think the punchline is what you just said is that you were passionate about Kyle. And that's the thing is you don't mind studying and like going ham on learning and reaching out to people because you it's knowledge that you want to know. It's not yeah. you're not forcefully trying to learn something or trying to be somebody that you that you truly aren't. You're you're following what your heart is telling you and that is like that's the punchline of this episode right there is oh. you just were you were fine you had that passion and you were just pushing the limits of what can we do with this and like where is this going to go if we just do this and then do that. Yeah, pa it's, finding your passion is so so important and I I want that for for everyone. I yeah. literally I'm passionate about wanting people to find their passion yeah. because I think that when people are passionate about things and they're doing what they love to do, it's just good vibes, man. It's dude, good energy. It's so contagious. Yeah. It's so contagious. It's so inspiring. It's really what makes the world go around. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the reason that we have great art. It's the yeah. reason that you know, we have it, it's just like when people are or or you know and and it doesn't just have to be art, too. It's mm -hmm. the reason we have great business. It's the reason you know, it just makes like the world everything, keep it going literally makes and, the world keep going. Yeah. And I and and I understand that it's difficult to find your passion too. I under, I, I have respect for that too because there's I have tons of friends and family and people I love who who struggle finding their passion. You know what I mean? And I see it in them, and I'm like, I see your passion. Like, why don't you do this? And it's like you can't. But no, they don't. They have to do that. Want to they do have it. to. Yeah. It's like it has to come from within. And I think that I was blessed to find that passion in the music industry and wanting to be a music manager of all things, which is like. Sounds like the worst. It, it sounds could be weird. Like the most cutthroat. Like it sounds. It's, it sounds just like kind of weird. But you know, I I remember seeing Jerry Maguire when I was like super young and was like, I want to be Jerry Maguire. You know what I mean? And then it went further where I was like, okay, do I have to be in order to be a sports agent? Do I have to be an attorney? And then do I have to go to law school? I'm not that studious. I don't. I know I don't really want. I, for a second, I wanted to go to law school, and then I'm like, I don't want to be. I don't yeah, want to do, do that. I don't want to do that. I want to. I want to be involved in these, these, you know, really cool athletes that I admire as business and help them, you know, grow their careers and, and represent them. But I don't know if I, you know, want to be an attorney. And then, then it was like, I want to be involved in the music business. There's so many cool assets to it. It's like, there's the creativity of making music and then there's all the marketing stuff and there's brand partnerships and there's touring and there's like so many exciting aspects of it that like, today I'm finally getting to, to, I'm getting to like start to experience that stuff and it's wonderful. It's amazing. Yeah. It's like everything you dream of, you know, as far, from a, from a nerdy, from, nerdy yeah. music, no, but the young, ma the it. young <laughs> aspiring music manager in me is starting to, to, to realize his dream. So that's, talk, talk to me about the branding aspect. Cause that's something I actually wanted to talk to you about. I, I like love like the super duper branding, like you're super duper Nolan, they're super duper Kyle, they're super duper Brick, super duper Max. Like yeah, the branding and the coloring, just everything like fits so perfectly if somebody is trying to create their own brand, whether it's for personal or for business, like how does one get to that point? Because clearly the branding for you guys has worked. So yeah, how do how do you how does that happen? Thanks, thanks for that compliment. Yeah, oh yeah, no, absolutely. um, man, and that was the one thing too for me is like I kind of thought that 
that was something that I always understood. I was always a brand nerd. Like mm-hmm. from as early as I could remember, I was like obsessed with Nike and I was obsessed with the, these sports teams and like the colors and the designs and the jerseys and the sneakers. And like, just all, I was like always nerdy about brands. Mm-hmm. I always loved brands. And then when I was in middle school, it was like all the like hip hop urban, like brands like Sean John and fat farm and you know, that type of stuff. Yeah, so yeah. it was like, I, I like, I loved like the storytelling. I loved ads and like magazines, like hip hop magazines or basketball magazines magazines like I love that stuff and so I was always like early on that was the main thing I I, I kind of prided myself on was I was like I think I I think I'm, I haven't done it yet but I think I know how to build a brand and so you know I think the thing about brands are and this is like a little bit of a weird way to think about it but we all kind of are a brand yes individually absolutely you know what i mean we all kind of are especially like, in the world we live in not, today yeah, especially yeah. in the world we live in today with social media like you were talking about on instagram yeah. like we are all a we brand. are we are all brands and absolutely. so even if you're even if your brand is you're a pizza boy you're a pizza delivery guy right like you carry yourself you present yourself in this way you speak in this way you deal you deal with people in a certain way you you know what I mean you deal with your boss in a certain way and it's like and sometimes it's like those brands like win favor your brand wins favor with your boss or loses favor with your boss you're and it's just like how you carry yourself so I think that more than just like wrapping a bow around it or creating a cool logo or coming up with a nickname or coming up with like a name that like a you know you know just like an umbrella brand or mm-hmm. whatever like I think it's really just like every day like are you do you make your bed? Is that your brand? Is like every day I make my bed before I leave the house or every day I exercise before I leave the house or, you know, I speak kindly to people or, uh, you know what I mean? And so I think that when you start at the complete foundation of a brand, it's really all those things. It's how do you make people feel, you know, like, you know, do you inspire people? Do you, is your brand, you flex all your cool possessions on the internet? Is your brand, you know what I mean? Like whatever, right? There's like, a million things like, are you into fashion? Are you not into fashion? Like, so there's, so from a, just a a super like cellular level, I think that everybody is a brand. And then when you start thinking about that, and then obviously like when you're trying to showcase something to the world, then you're trying to elevate it. Like what about me is like really unique and really cool. And I think that that was one of the things that I kind of helped Kyle. Like my first things guiding Kyle was like, I saw like his I saw his brand like I saw how brilliant and unique he was maybe even before he did and I could kind of could make sense of it and I I kind of was able to like even help explain that to him you know yeah. where he like I was just like yo dude you're like you're like you uni- you're like really like cool and unique like like someone like Tyler the creator cuz Tyler the creator was huge at this time and Tyler the creator had this like really like cool brand with like the odd future shit i was like you're like this dude but you're not like him you know what i mean you're different you're in your own way you you're know what i mean you're just approachable your you're i was like you exist in your own world and so i think that for the super duper brand which is something that we're still like literally working on to this day and it's some so it's a thing that i think that we have so so much to improve on with it like it can like you guys if you think it's good now just wait you yeah, know what i mean yeah. but it's like anything else yeah so um we always kind of thought like what what makes us unique and like how can we showcase that to the world and you know what's crazy is like i mean man it's <laughs> it's funny because like i remember Kyle and Brick just g- getting into like the pink and blue shit like super early and like these pastel like vibrant like colors that like weren't popular a few years ago and now I'm seeing them everywhere and I'm like oh my gosh everybody likes pink yeah. you know what I mean when like we started doing that shit it was Wa- like unpopular yeah. it was like what you know like it was like and I always say this too is like when Kyle put out Beautiful Loser that same year <sighs> Yeezus came out you know what I mean so like yeah. hip hop the biggest hip hop artist made the darkest hip hop album of his career and it was like fashion was everything was all black you know what I mean and he, Kyle's making this like bright bright, bright music positive like, yeah, yeah. like really like vibey like and also just super fun loving happy you know what I mean yeah. and it's funny because you know and some my, my boy Josh said this to me the other day too was he was like he was like yeah man he was like there's not like really any like positive happy rappers out there if you think about it 
like that kind of like that's a I pillar think of, of is like logic chance logic yeah, yeah kyle and they kind of all gravitate towards each other too mm-hmm. too but yeah like there's not that many like of just them pushing that whole positive, positive like yeah aspect. logic is very much like that and yeah. like yeah and, and chance and you know what i mean but it's like it's funny because it's like it's taken the culture a while to come around or just to at least to be accepting of it and it's taking kyle's growth as an artist and like you know, his exposure to increase and stuff like that. So where his like thing, but that was always the thing is like, what makes, what makes us unique? So I think that that's the, the thing about a brand, like it's staying true to who you are. Staying true. That's, it sounds like he stayed true to who he was. Absolutely. And that's, that's how you got to this whole brand and like this music yeah. and elevation. Cause yeah. he's not trying to be the dark artist. He's being that, I don't even know him, but I feel like I, I would know him if I saw him in a room because he seems like the, outgoing just bubbly like what's up like who are yeah, you like yeah, just like yeah. just like one of those people that you want to be in a room with and that's what i like i love is is being we just said it before like you know being surrounded by passionate people i love just being in a room with people that are just happy i don't care if you're a construction worker if you drive limos like if you're happy dude there's nothing better like you can't tell me there's not a better feeling in the world than being around people that actually like are, are loving happy. themselves yeah, and having yeah, a good time yeah and, dude yeah it makes it's just People who are pleasant to be around are yes. the best, dude. They're the best. And and I think that comes from like when you love, you know, when you love what you do, mm-hmm. I think that that like, you know, that is like something that just comes out of you. you yeah. You become, you're pushing it back into the you're world. You're pushing it. Yeah. And so that's the thing to kind of get back to that passion thing is I just, I really want to like, from a young age, I think that that's something that like above this, like parents and school and people being like you need to go to college you need to do this you need to do this you need to find what you're passionate about that's Absolutely. what you need to do you don't you don't need to go to college you don't need to to you know what i mean yeah. you need to find what you you're just passionate need to do about. it kind of goes back to something we said earlier about you just have to do it like you have to just go for it like you have to try the things that seem of interest and if it doesn't work it's like okay yeah i don't enjoy this fuck it let's try this yeah or, create- or it's not working let's try a different path or how can I add something to the mix that maybe is going to make this like work? Yeah. Creating momentum is like everything. It's like everything like, you know, and like, like what we were talking about earlier, it's like, you have to overcome that resistance too. Cause there's going to be, you know, the devil on your shoulder giving you every reason why not to start. Why today, why tomorrow is better mm-hmm. than today. Why, why you shouldn't you do it or why you sh- you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, and, that that's something that's like super 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 real. Uh, uh, quick book recommendation: hey, the war the war of art by. Okay. Oh, I'm blanking. I'm blanking on. I should know this, but the war of art. The war of art. People yeah, can yeah, Google yeah, it. yeah. I'll, can, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll make sure. I I should know. I should know. Thinking back on all uh, the Stephen Pressfield. That's who you got it. Is. it. Boom. Got Steven, it. Got it. Good, man. Okay, I can't okay, think okay, of names okay, like okay, that okay. on the spot. <laughs> Thinking back on all the the tours you guys have done, the events, the projects, the singles, the entire process has there been one thing that that really set the career or has it been the entire journey man you know it's it's been the it's absolutely been the been the journey it's been the journey and um you know it's it's crazy because recently with Kyle's like hit song I spy and that that moment right mm-hmm. like it's easy to like there's a lot of things that I think I kind of like attribute to that you know what mm-hmm. i mean there's tons of stuff that i attribute to that but without the six years of groundwork prior to that i think that that doesn't necessarily exist in the same way that it exists you know what i mean so i and then you know i always say that if you would have told me like if a fortune teller would have said work really hard for the next five years every single day like work on, put one foot in front of the other every single day for the next five years and something magical, miraculous is going to happen, right? I would have just gotten up every day and been like, do, 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 do. And because five years and like in, in retrospect, when I think about it now, like that five years is nothing. That yeah. happened like, you know what I mean? It, it was a, like, and I think it's a blessing that we were able to have that before that big moment because now it really like all the doors that are opening and all the 
all the groundwork had been laid. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're ready to deal with having our foot in the door. You know what I mean? Whereas like if we didn't, if that was the first thing that Kyle put out, like in 2000, if like if I spy, yeah. if it just, if I spy was the first thing that he put out, like in 2013 or whatever, like we might not have been ready for it. You know what I mean? And we might not have been able to deal with like some of the the, the incoming shit traffic. storm, the shit storm yeah. that's flying our way, which is it's it's a it's blessing. A good, it's it's wonderful. a good storm, but there's yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's like a candy it. storm, I guess, or <laughs> something like that. What do I, I want? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What you got to be really careful. You got to be careful. You a couple skittles and then keep it moving. And but, I, you know what? In asking that question, I knew exactly what you're gonna say. I knew it wasn't a song. I knew it wasn't a uh, yeah. an event, but it's the entire journey. And and. Do I wish somebody would come up to me, tap me on the shoulder, and say, "Bobby, if you do this for the next four years, your podcast is gonna be number one in the world." Yes, because then I'm like, "All right, let's count down the days. I'm gonna be there." But it's also the the kind of like funness of like trying to make this a game, and like even when shit's not going to plan, like the way I'm planning it, just like, I mean, what else am I gonna do? Sit here and bitch about it? No, I just have to keep going. So it's like, yeah, because it's really, to make it's, fun it's really it. about the small victories. Like as awesome as this past year has been, and how many. I think that even this past year has been a number of a little bit bigger victories. You know what I'm saying? Whereas like, you know, having a multi-platinum single and, you know, doing a record deal and, 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 you know, just all of these cool things like selling out Webster Hall. I'm just trying to think of like, those are kind of like they're individual, like little victories where you can break them down into a moment. But like previously, if you wanted to talk about the last few years, there were all these other great moments you know what i mean too yeah. going on tour with g easy you know what i mean like there's just all these things so it's like i think that it's really just about small victories in general and even like something to track progress i remember when don't want to fall in love got a million plays and in, in like a month right or something like that which like at the time was like that was a great that was big for us Huge. we were stoked on it i remember hearing don't want to fall in love on the the kyle on the radio for the first time with that song <laughs> in la like what this yeah, is crazy you're loving it, right? so it's like I think that that is the thing. And when you put one foot in front of the other, you're putting yourself in position to, to get, you know, rewarded. But I, there's like that quote that about like, you're not entitled to the, you know, you're not, in, you're only entitled to the work. You're not, you don't get to control like victories. You don't get to control wins and losses. You're just entitled to like yeah. play the game. And so if the game isn't enough for you, if you're an artist or you're a manager and you, you're only thinking about success and you don't just like love what you're doing. Like literally, like you can't, you got to like completely remove any wins or losses and just like focus on the, the actual task. Yeah. Do you actually like being in the, I tell this artist too, like young artists that I, that I'm like meeting and stuff like that. I'm like, do you like love being in the studio? And then they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, like what is your definition of like, give me an example of how you love being in the studio. And I'm like, if you if you don't want to like spend the next two years of your life like twelve hours a day in the studio, it's if like you, you can't do that, it's not for you. Yeah. And then when you actually when when it when people actually decide that you're good, then it's like you have to tour like crazy, and then still spend that amount. You gotta like put you up the equivalent long... amount of time in the studio when you're exhausted, and you're like, so it's like that's the thing is like just falling in love with the process, you know, and and like. I think about it like, you know, some, sometimes it's like, I think it's interesting because it can be, it can be more fun when there's no pressure. It can be, it can be more fun when there's no pressure and it's like just you and your homies and you have a dream, but then all of a sudden then it, it's, it's real now. And yeah. then there's that, there's the, those type of, there's the, um, the pros and cons that come with that too. Cause there's a so whole I think that there's like, there, there's, there's blessings throughout, but I think that it's really just about like being completely like content with where you're at or not content, but just like accepting where you're at and respecting where you're at yeah. and working every single day to continue to advance. Yeah. I like the perspective of the only thing you can, you can control is the work. You yeah. can't control the wins, you can't control the losses, but you can control how much time you're putting in. Yeah. And if things aren't really kind of going the way they should, you just have to keep working. There's like a more appropriate, in the bag of Agita, there's like a more appropriate like quote, which I'll, I should I should find and give it to you so you can put it in the notes. But yeah, you're, you're, you're only like, 
And if you, when you think about it like that, it, ta- it takes all the pressure away. It takes all the like whatever. And then, and it really reveals you to yourself. Do I actually love doing this? Yeah. Like did, did I, for the past five years pre like I spy and Kyle having a hit record, did I love, you know, like being an artist manager is like, yeah, like I would have died. Like I would be doing this no matter what. I yeah. love this. I think it's, it's so exciting and it's so fun. And a lot of it is because of the, you know, it's scrappy and you know, there is, there is success to be had and there's, there's people to meet and you know, it, it's really fun in that respect. But, but yeah, you, it's like, it's all about just falling in love with the, yeah, with you the, have to with fucking, the task. You you have know? To, yeah. And you have to love like the, 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 the grind, of it. the grind. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it's important to speak things into existence? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's all about positive af- affirmations. Like, I think I'm getting, like, I've always been very, very goal-oriented, but I'm trying to become even more specific. Yeah. With Like, them. narrowing it down to, like, precision. Like, like oh, I want to get in shape. To- like, I want to be 185 with this amount of muscle. Like, really, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think the more specific you can get, the better because you know that's a tough question because I, I just feel like you know you have to just put it in the atmosphere you know like sometimes you can like and I think that like you can communicate are, are just I, I'm, I'm, ha- I'm struggling to find the words but I could be like Bobby you're the best podcaster in the world and like tell you this every single day and you could look in the mirror and say that to yourself and then like i believe you have to s- sometimes take a step back and literally say out loud like what you want yeah and for me like i want to be a top podcaster i want to get this person on the podcast saying it out loud is almost for me a commitment of this is what i'm working towards and i need to make this happen you know the whole commitment aspect of and not kind of like bullshitting or I'm just a big believer of you have to, and I'm not saying go online and post like I'm going to be doing this in the next six months or I'm going to be doing this. It's more of like talking to your homies, the close ones who actually like are part of your journey, your process. Like, Hey, I want to do a record with this person or I want to get this person on the podcast, like speaking it into existence and then actually like following through and making it happen. I, yeah. I just think it's important to actually I don't yeah, want to. I don't want to say like shit into existence. It's dude. like you, you telling a friend, a close friend, is almost like now you have to like fall through with it. Or otherwise, they're like, "Yo, you told me you were gonna do this and you never did it. What's good with that?" You know what I mean? So true. So it's almost like they. It's almost like a like a contract you're having with yourself. Yeah. By saying it out loud. No, definitely, definitely. Like all of these things, whether you're te- like, and that's the one thing too is like I kind of. As I've gotten older, I've not, I've wanted to just be about things more and talk about them less. Cause like you know when you're young and you're first getting going, there's like so much of a like a you're having to prove to yourself and people around you that you're actually doing it. Yeah. You know, and and there were so many times in my young career and in Kyle's young career where I would like jump the gun on something and be like, oh, we're doing this, this, and this, <laughs> and then it, watch it all fall through and then look like an idiot. And I was always like, you know what? And I learned my lesson. And so it was like one of those things and th- this movie thing was an, a perfect example was because like we've been working on it since like February or March of as far as like do- he was doing castings and we were meeting with directors and producers and I was like so excited about it but I literally just didn't talk about it at all because I was like you know what I've seen so many things fall through and it, it's not anybody's fault it's not you know what I mean it just is what it is and so s- there are certain things that I would like keep to myself and like and I think that that's important in, as far as like just maybe not from a from a just like not wanting to jinx yourself, you know. But um, yeah, I guess I guess it's like just just affirming, yeah. you know, ha- having those people in your corner that can that are, are your confidants that I could like like I can tell you like I have this idea for a podcast, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And because I know you. Not only do you do this, but you you can also like hold me accountable too. Yeah, absolutely. And you can help me. Absolutely. And you can encourage me. So having that having that core team is really important. And I think that going back to the super duper crew, I think that that's what we've provided at each other is that encouragement. You know what I mean? I kind of feel like I'm like the big brother in a sense. Yeah. So like, I'm. It's always there's a little bit of tough love always with me because I always want all the guys to like do 
excellent. I want them to be great. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's and whenever there isn't like, whenever there's like, I feel like, you know, just uncomfortable things within our relationship it usually has to do with me wanting them to be really great and Want expecting it. so much out of them okay you know what i mean which and isn't so, always it's not a bad thing it's, it's just having a bad it's just thing. having high I expectations i kind of see myself as like the coach a little bit so it's okay. like i kind of gotta like push and pull a little bit there's like a little more psychology there you know in order to like get get them to like you know rise to the occasion yeah you know and uh, you know, I'm learning just like anybody else. So, yeah. so I don't know if it's right or wrong all the time, but I'm, I'm definitely doing my best and I definitely care. I'm passionate. You know, that's the other thing is like working with your friends is not easy. No. That's like something that's not easy. And that's how it always starts. And it has to start like that because it needs that. But like sometimes, you know, y your friends don't want it as much as you, or, you know, it's just like things kind of shift and change. And then it's like, because they're your friends, they know you really well. And like, there's just challenges with yeah. that. But I also would say that like, people talk about like, you need to work with people that you can trust. There's no one you can trust more than your friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? They'll have your back. They're going to have, they're going to have yeah. your fucking back. They're yeah. going to have your back. They're going to tell you how it is. Sometimes they're wrong. You know what I mean? Sometimes they're right. But like, they're going to have your back and like, it's going to be more challenging. You know what I mean? Especially when, when but it's not a bad challenge to have. It's not a bad I would, challenge I'd have. rather have that challenge with somebody that I personally know versus somebody that I pulled onto a team off the street or somebody that is hired to do something like I'd rather be conflicting. And I guess it probably is hard sometimes for you guys because whether you guys are touring or in the studio, you guys are around each other all the time. And it's like, when do we, when do we balance business and when do we balance like friendship cut that shit out like we're not talking about industry we're not we're just gonna be human beings and grab lunch and like chill and go to the beach and like dude it's, live your life it's hard like, bro. i bet it is hard like it's really hard because there's such a fine line with that you know there's such a fine line with that it's really challenging yeah man. but it's it, like but, i'm learning it every day yeah i'm learning it the hard way every single day but there's nothing more rewarding than coming up with your friends and when you're like like Taking L's with your friends is still fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're with the, you're it's with still the boys a story. The it's squad. still a story. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's still yeah. a story. Striking, it's still something that, you know, striking when you strike out with a girl, there's no <laughs> one, there's no one better to talk about with than your friends, you know? Yeah. Or if you have like this big ass epic moment, a yeah. win, there's nobody better to win with. So I think that like you know, in just like the game itself, it's just, it's fun to do it with people that you love and you like admire. And I, and I, I said something on Instagram the other day where I just think that the respect of a friendship is, and some people don't have friends who are respectful. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a different, I'm not talking about those, but like, I think that in, in intimate relationships, even with people, I think that having like a friendship where it's like, I respect you as an individual, like I love you for you as an individual, yeah. regardless whether I'm in like n completely like removed from my impact or my involvement with you, you're an awesome person. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that that's where friendships should, that's where friendships start. It's like, you're awesome, dude. You're funny. You're cool. Yeah, there's you have these other kind of but like I qualities, like you for but who, I like you for, you who, for you who you are. are. So I'm so I'm gonna respect that person just because them of by who themselves. They are. Yeah, and then I think that that is a good foundation to do business on. You know what I mean? Like even if it's like a dude, I respect you as like an amazing like person, like podcaster. You're yeah. an amazing. You're a great podcaster. And so like that's all it takes. That, that's all it, that's takes. all it takes. And then and then like you know then it's like you can build a work relationship on top of that. You know and like. I just feel like sometimes it it can turn into this thing where it's like because you're so close for friends then it becomes really challenging and it's like you know it gets a mix it gets then you know then it's like becomes emotional and yeah. that's the one thing about business and emotions is like those don't ever mix well no. business and emotions never mix well no you have to leave you, have, you to have to like to leave, leave the emotions out at the door and you check absolutely in with the business it has to be just I've I've had moments recently where I <laughs> take things very emotionally and i'm like what like yeah. what do you mean and then i'm like sitting there and i'll talk it through with my homies and they'll just be like that's how it is it's just business it's just business dude it is it's just business and like 
it's really hard yeah. because especially when it, okay, so now we're talking about finding your passion, right? And then we're talking about not mixing business and emotions. Well, when you have your passion and it's like just a passion and then you turn it into a business, it's like to have passion, there's emotion in passion, you know? Passion is an emotion, yeah. right? And so you build that passion into a business and then all of a sudden it's like, no, but you're not allowed to bring your emotion here now that it's business. It's yeah. like, wait, what? Yeah, that's you how know? I got here. That's how I got here. Yeah. That's all I had was emotion. Yeah. And that's when that's what, it's like the only, when the only driving force at the beginning is emotion, it's like, but now you're telling me to like, just leave this at the door. Like, I, I don't, I don't even know how to operate without this. This is what keeps me going. This is the reason I'm doing it. And yeah, it's challenging. It's really challenging, but you have to learn the hard, you learn the hard way a couple of times. And then you're like, you know what? I'm going to leave myself out of this a little bit. I'm yeah. going to leave my personal emotions out of this a little bit. And it's something that I'm working on daily. You yeah. know, it's, it's like super challenging. If, if you wrote a book today, what would you title it? Um, man, I would probably, I actually have an, a couple book ideas, but Ooh. I would, I would probably, I think I would, I would title it student of the game and, Fair. and that, cause that's the, the title of my upcoming podcast. Coming soon. coming soon, <laughs> coming soon. You're going to, you're going to hold me accountable. You're going to make me do it. bro. You're going to make me do it. I so, got you. No. And I just, it will, I would get my super smart friends to all write a chapter on different oh, things. That's dope. Okay. Yeah. So I, I would kind of like, maybe that's what it is. Maybe we start this podcast and then all my guests, I have them contribute to it. What do you think I'm working on? Boom. Every episode, there's a gem. There's some type dope, of takeaway dope. format of a book. Write it and boom, there it is. Send yeah. it. Send it. <laughs> Send it. One of these days. That's I, great. It's yeah. Just, so it's, it's one of those, like, it's easy to you, do you that. You have way. to kind of, when the time is right. I want to do it, but yeah, that's something I would love to do. I never thought I would ever say that I would like to write a book. Like if yeah. you told me this when I was in elementary school or in high school that one day you're going to want to write a book, I'd say you're full of shit. Yeah. But, uh, I just, I, to me, it's like, why not? Why wouldn't I? Yeah. I have the format of something great of what it, the book could possibly be. So it's, why not when just I do, do it? it? Like, yeah. I mean, who gives a shit? No, I've it? always wanted to like do that. I've always wanted to, but it's again, it's that resistance yeah. like fighting you. And so I, I've definitely gotten spent more time this year writing, Yeah, you know, and just like and pinning just, myself just down to, to it. Your, just your, your like, your be mind able to articulate. into something. And yeah. I mean, that's how before the, before technology, before podcasts, before anything was recorded, that's how history was passed on was through written like books and yeah. I think it's powerful because you could leave this earth and there's still going to be something of you left. You have this yeah. book board. You have No, and I'm just I'm like a I'm a book junkie too, so I just love reading and like the impact of a great book is like has just be been refreshing. so pivotal yeah. to me just in my life, you know. And so yeah, no, that's it's so important. Like I'd love to student of the game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I want to see. I, I think that I think that book. yeah. I think that I just think that like what it really takes to succeed in any like industry is just like being a student of it and like really wanting to learn it, you know, and and doing whatever it takes to learn, you know. And I think yeah, the people who are successful are like big time students of the game, and I think that they can tell you that. And and I and that is what has gotten me to where I am, where mm-hmm. I'm just getting started. But yeah, no, definitely. Just yeah, finding that and and finding that passion, you know, purpose in the youth, finding your purpose, you know, because that's even pa- pur- purpose is even, I think, deeper than it's passion. Much deeper than passion. It's I think the passion, passion is is what guides you to the purpose. Because purpose. purpose is even, man. Like what is your purpose some of living? There's some depth there. I, I think the passion is a personal. Like, what are you passionate about? What's, yeah. What do I like? Personally, yeah. do you like? But what's your purpose for the world? It's like, crazy. That's a that's a loaded question. Yeah. What is your purpose of your life right now? Why are you on this earth? Because I think I think things happen for a reason. Aside from religious religions and all that, I think things happen for a reason. Uh, and I'm a big believer in energy of yeah. just good intentions and putting out good energy and somehow, some way, it'll come back to you. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Even when, we, even when I get burned, I recently got burned a couple weeks ago. Uh, I told the person it was a stupid incident, and I just told the person I was like, I could I was, I could freak out right now. Did, did wait? Did you, like, your your Uber driver cancel on you? <laughs> <laughs> so like that. But I was like, you know what? I just want you to know the energy is gonna come back to you. That's all I'm gonna say to you. I just yeah, said, yeah. I put out good energy in the world. You don't. It's gonna come back to you. And yeah, that's, like, real. That's, that's real. That's real. This is how I feel. Um, 
Before I get into closing questions, this is when I reverse the role. Allow my guests to ask me any one question. It could be about something we talked about, something you want to know about your boy. It yeah, yeah, it yeah, yeah. Any one question, clean the slate, fire away. Okay. Um, I was actually thinking about this earlier when we talked about it, but aside from the podcast, what? Okay, if you couldn't do the podcast. Yeah. Like, this is your passion, obviously, yeah. and this is your purpose right now, too, right? There, or there's, obviously, the purpose is a little deeper, but what would you what would you do? What would you like to do? I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't know. Uh, Has anyone asked you that question before? I think somebody asked me that. They, they asked me a different question. They asked me uh, what company would I want to work for if I had to work for a company. Uh, uh, and I ended up saying, like, Tesla or something, like, a really cool, cool company, company yeah. like that. But if I wasn't to do this, I'd... I'm not even just trying to like say that. I really don't know. I uh, I don't know. I was talking to somebody. So I drive Uber out here in LA. That's dope. Great way to network. Great way to get to know the city since I'm new. I'm the new yeah, kid on the block. Yeah. And I, once again, going back to uh, like meeting people and things happening for a reason, my rider, uh, I picked him up right here in Studio City. He was going down to uh, I don't know, somewhere in LA. I don't know where I'm going at the time. I hit, hit GPS and just take me where I need to go. And the guy was a photographer. He had done a lot of stuff. He had shot like Johnny Depp and some really cool people. And we were talking, you know, he's like, what are you doing besides Uber? There's got to be something. I was like, yeah, I, I actually host a podcast. I gave him the whole rundown on it. And, uh, you know, I was just like, you know, it's it's fun. Just, you know, sometimes it's just a struggle. You're trying to like the whole mental game. And I swear this guy, it was it was like the first ride of my day yesterday. And I swear it was it was as if he was placed there to, to start my day because – he goes into into talking about how, you know, he's like, I bet you there's a lot of weekend nights you don't go out and you work on it or this and that. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's truthful. Like, I put a lot of time into this. He's like, you know what the beauty of it is, though, is you have you have something to work on. You have yeah. something you're working on all the time. He goes, it doesn't matter if you're not getting the numbers you want. It doesn't matter if you're not making money on it. He's like, you wake up every day and you feel like you have something you're working towards. And I was like, yeah, I do. And he's like that is the key to life and this guy you can tell he's like probably like 50 six years old so he's been at the game of life for some time that's and he's, real and he's doing something he's passionate about and he got on my car and i just for the next like hour driving around i couldn't stop thinking about what this guy had said like having something that you're working on it doesn't matter what it is but something that you passionately love and enjoy and it doesn't matter what other people are saying and if, if, whether it's good or bad that's the passion like that's that's the that's, thing that's, that's what, what we need that's, that's what, what we need motivates yeah. you. that's what that's what you need take you to where you're where you're trying to go so if i i mean i you know as i briefly told you i i, I like up, how you look at this when you talk I about do. it like the, like <laughs> this is like the grail <laughs> it's like the grail <laughs> i got the plan i got this like it's, dude i wake up as people can't see but i got my better here i wake up and i just look at this thing and i and yeah it's just that's be, tight bro. bro i don't know it's all about the dude that's that's so true, man. Like having something, having something that you're passionate to work on, like that's what makes life worth living. Yeah. That's what like, you know, it's like how you fill your day. It's like you wake up, what am I going to do? Exactly what I want to do, what I love to do, something that makes me feel, feel, feel fulfilled, something that makes me feel productive, something that makes me happy. Like, you know, that I think that, and then, and then, you know, that will lead you to your purpose. Yeah. You know, that passion will lead you to your purpose. And then it's like, you just keep running with it. Yeah. You just keep running with it. You just keep chasing it, you yeah. know? I and that's the thing too, is like, that's so exciting. There's no, like, there's never any arrival. Like you're not, like when you, when this podcast get like, mark my words, we'll come, we'll talk about this. But like when you have freaking a million subscribers on Apple or on, on the podcast app or whatever, iTunes, like you're not you're not just gonna be like, well, I'm done. My work here is done. <laughs> no, no, no. You're gonna be like, yo, did I get two million? Like, yeah, you, yeah, you know what I mean. And that I think, and if you ever do feel like you arrived, then you didn't really love it, anyways. Do you know what I mean? You I didn't. Agree. If you ever feel like, you know, well, Kyle made a hit record. My work here is done. I'm like, time to like hang up the hang up the cleats. <laughs> like, no, you know, no. like you can never. You can never, it's you have like, to check. I feel like there's boxes. You have to check. There, I don't even think so. I mean, I think that there's like, I think fulfillment comes from 
doing your very best. You know, I think fulfillment comes from doing your very best, but I don't think that at any point it's like, like, obviously there are definitely milestones and stuff like that, but I don't think that y- you'll, you ever get like tired or like feel like you've done enough. No. You know what I mean? What helps me sleep at night is that by the time I put my head onto my pillow, I need to feel that I, I, I put 110% into that day that, that I, couldn't have done anything differently. Like yeah. that's what helps me go to sleep quick because it's like, all right, I'm gonna go to sleep. I gave wake it up, and I'm gonna do the same thing the next day. Yeah, I gave it my all. Yeah, today. And absolutely. As I think that's what helps people. What can help you is if you can look at yourself in the mirror at the end of the day, and and tell yourself honestly, I gave my this day my entirety, 12, 15 hours. What yeah. else can you complain? You put in the work. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. You can't be mad about the way cards are falling. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have yep. to be you have to be happy with with how the work. Mm-hmm. Um closing questions. Yeah. I want you to imagine there's a picture frame on the wall right here. Mm-hmm. Ten years from now, you're in the picture frame. What and who else do we see within that picture frame? Um <laughs> Ten years from now. Ten years from in now. the picture. Um man. I de- okay, I'd like to see I'd just like to, to see a picture of the super duper crew. You know? Yeah. All of us like one of the ones you see on our Instagram and just like ten years down the road. Everybody healthy. In Ventura. In Ventura? Yeah, maybe in Ventura. Okay. Maybe in Ventura. I, I might have said it around Ventura. Ventura, Ventura, Ventura. Nah, it's all good. Either way. Either way. That's but dope. um yeah, yeah, just all of us. And and just in our in our evolved selves. Yeah. Hopefully everyone happy and successful and do, a, do honestly just doing whatever it is that makes them happy. Yeah. You know, whether it's like running around with us, whether it's, you know, one thing or their another. families, whatever. Yeah. Whatever, whatever makes them tick. You know, where can people find you on social media if they don't already follow okay, you? Uh, at Nolan underscore Smith on Instagram and, and Twitter. And then um, you can also send me a text too. Text me eight zero five one eight zero five eight five six six four five six. You're the first person to ever give out a number on here. Yeah, that's pretty fire. Yeah, no, I, I like just, it. It's an easy communication. I want, no, I feel like you know, it's just a little more personal. Like I have a phone for you know people who want to like reach me. You know what I mean? So, like I I like to because I think that maybe if you found something like cool about this or it was like productive to you or you like something about this that you related to send me a line and we can be friends. I feel like there's so many, there's a lot of like-minded people out there and it's like hard to find people. Like yeah. people might send you a DM or whatever, but it's like social media can be really impersonal. It's like everyone's there. It's like everyone's at the party, but like only a couple people are talking to each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas like, you know. And too, like the whole like, oh, I tweeted at this person, like we're boys. Yo, my man, yeah. drop this. Or yeah. the text is it's just between two people. Yeah, it's like, just between knows two people. It. Yeah. yeah. And like, I think that, yeah, I, like I've had a lot of great connections that way. And sometimes like, and I'm always just looking, I'm always looking to grow my team, grow my personal team, whether it's like people who are super passionate and can relate to me and their passion for like music or, or whatever. But or just like they have something like a talent that they can add to the team. Great photographer, get great videographer, podcaster. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like whatever. I'm I'm always just trying to like search for like minded people and just like bring people together. You know what I mean? And help Build. people achieve their dreams. You know? That's what it's all about. Yeah. Last question for you. Somebody that's listening in hasn't found their passion or purpose. What two to three pieces of advice would you give to them? And a lot has been said, but what two to yeah. three would you kind of just jump to think um, of? That it's tough to say. It's really tough to say because I think, I think that what gets in the way of people and their finding their passion is just fear, you know. And for some some people experience it. We all experience that that fear, that resistance. But I think some people experience it worse than others, where it's like a little more debilitating, you know. And I think they can lead that back. They can like do further digging with that and find out what the real root of that is. But man, I would just say like be autonomous and and move around and experience things and meet people and talk to people and like get out of your comfort zone. I think, I think that that's, if you're, if you're really comfortable, then I think you're, you're keeping yourself from not only learning about yourself, but just 
great experiences that could lead you to, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like when people say like, Oh, I want to meet somebody like to get in a relationship or something like that, or they're lonely or whatever. It's like, well, are you like putting yourself in position to meet people? You know, like, yeah. no. So like do something, do something. Yeah. yeah. And that, that thing for me is challenging. And that's something that I would love to, to have more information about and to be able to help guide people to find their passion, like even better. But I would just say, and then just like be a student of the game, like learn, like there are so many different things to do in life and like learn a little bit about each of them. You know, if somebody's a doctor and that's like kind of interesting to you and you like know them or you know somebody who knows them, ask them about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Find out what it really means to be a doctor, you know? And then maybe like through that you can be like, oh, okay, you know, that like this is what I want to do you know and I think also passions don't necessarily have to turn into a career so yeah. like I think it to me passion is so natural it like is already happening it's like you know yeah like it's, you can discover you obviously have to discover it but it's like what are you gravitating towards like what are you moving closer to naturally you know like I'm I, I'm I've always been super passionate about working out and I've always been super passionate about yoga and like mm -hmm. Just recently, I've just been like, I want to deepen my yoga practice. Like, I want to like learn more about it, take classes, read books, like do these things because as soon as you find that passion and you dig into it even more, it just becomes more rewarding too. Yeah. Comes flow. It comes, you know, like podcasting. I'm passionate about podcasting and learning about podcasting. And then like, as I like discover these new podcasts and like peep podcasters, it's like, it just, the whole experience just is heightened, yeah. you know? So I, I would say it's like it's really hard to find that initial spark but look for it you know i think that like yeah it's like you know if like you like let's say you like red cars or something like that all of a sudden all you see on the road are red cars you know it's like pay attention to what's pay attention to you. like yeah open open your eyes to like what's going on around you and i think that i think that you'll find it and it's also just believe that you'll find it too you know, want to find it. I think it's all like, it's even more like cellular than that. Like what we were talking about earlier, you know, like, yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. Nolan Smith. My man. Thank you for coming on the podcast. My man. Thank awesome. you, bro. Yeah. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Yeah. Absolutely. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I really do appreciate it. If you could leave a one sentence review in the comment section below about what you'd like, what you'd like to see in the future, that would be awesome. And if you really want to make me happy, please subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date when Bob Bay drops a new video. We'll catch you guys next time.